Uh, so we presented the first 29 patients uh, who enrolled on a pediatric hum combined uh, immunotherapy, chemotherapy, radiation uh, trial uh, with two separate dose escalations of endoximod, one in combination with radiation um, and one in combination with a chemotherapy drug called temozolomide. Um, we also presented uh, pilot data for the first six patients uh, enrolled with newly diagnosed diffuse intrinsic pontine glioma, which is DIPG. So the, uh, the relapsed refractory brain tumor patients that were enrolled into the dose escalation cohorts uh, tolerated the treatment uh, very well with a uh, few toxic side effects. Um, which, was, uh, which is important because the um, combining immunotherapy with cytolytic therapies like radiation and chemotherapy, uh, which have their own toxicities, uh, layers on sort of toxicity profiles, but we're fortunate that uh, endoxamod doesn't have overlapping toxicities with the radiation or the chemotherapy drugs that we chose. Um, the kids are doing uh, very well. Um, we have uh, a proportion of kids, uh, e even at the phase one level, that have achieved long-term control of their disease and are still on the trial at over a year. So uh, the in, endoximod is an IDO inhibitor drug which uh, um, works by uh, shutting down one of the natural immune regulatory mechanisms that tumors can hijack in order to uh, avoid immune responses. And um, combination multimodal therapy with immunotherapy like endoximod plus radiation and chemotherapy, uh, we really felt like the optimal setting for that uh, combination was in frontline therapy. Um, and we've recently opened a pilot cohort enrolling newly diagnosed diffuse intrinsic pontine glioma patients, which is DIPG, um, in the frontline setting. And we chose that patient population because essentially it's a ruthlessly progressive disease. Uh, it's uniformly fatal and there have been no real advances uh, in treating that disease in 40 years. Um, essentially, um, all the patients uh, succumb to their disease uh, by two years and the median survival with the only effective therapy, which is palliative radiation, is 10 to 12 months. For the most part, the patients are actually tolerating this treatment platform very well. Uh, the newly diagnosed DIPG patients we were concerned about because the brainstem is a particularly bad place to have a tumor. Um, it's a very tight area. There's uh, not a lot of room for uh, swelling and any, on any immunotherapy that has on-target inflammatory responses in a space as uh, confined as the brainstem uh, can cause local edema that can drastically worsen presenting symptoms and those can be fatal. So we were very concerned uh, and we watched those patients very closely but fortunately they've all, uh, all six that we um, have that have completed radiation uh, did so without major toxicity um, and all had uh, improvement in their presenting symptoms. Um, so we're very happy about that.